Since the first modern games in 1896, the Olympics have been about one thing, being the best. You can see right now, leading the overall medal count with 69, they have the most... This is the Olympic torch from the 1968 Summer Games. It's best known for this moment. Participants trained for years to show the world their strength, their athleticism. But sometimes it's the subtle actions that deserve the gold. This is the Olympic torch from the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. Three short years from World War II. During the opening ceremony, American athletes refused to salute Hitler in a show of defiance against the man advocating for Aryan supremacy. The athletes placed their hats over their hearts instead. Now this is an autograph from Jesse Owens, one of America's stars from those games. After winning four medals for track and field, many credited Owens for destroying Hitler's racist myths. A black man defeated some of the best white athletes from all around the world. And Hitler watched it all happen in his own country. Joseph Goebbels, who had watched the games, collected the autographs and met with all of the Olympic winners, except for one. Jesse Owens. He refused to give him the dignity of a meeting. However, that autograph I showed you was actually found on the desk of Joseph Goebbels by the U.S. forces as they marched in. Apparently, Goebbels didn't want to show the world that he was a fan, but certainly wanted to collect Jesse Owens' autograph. See the photo album from these games? Jesse Owens is an American Olympic hero, no doubt, but there's something else to this story I want to tell you about. It's the character of the lesser-known man, his opponent, Lutz Long. Owens was struggling during the long jump qualifiers, and he kept landing over the foul line. Long quietly pulled Owens aside and instructed him, jump just a few inches earlier. Owens did. He made the jump and won the gold. When he did, the unlikely friends embraced right in front of Goebbels and Hitler. This German man showed the world true character. Once upon a time, the best American politicians were quintessential examples of true character as well. I simply can't believe it. I'm serious. No, really. Especially our first president. This is the prayer at Valley Forge. Story has it that Quaker Isaac Potts found George Washington in the woods during the Revolutionary War. He was praying for the U.S. military, our country, and the humanity of the world. He prayed out loud. Potts once described it, saying, quote, Such a prayer I have never heard from the lips of a man. I left him alone, praying. By the way, Potts, up until that moment, was on the side of the king. He changed sides after he heard Washington pray. This is a real lock of hair from Washington. It wasn't unusual to braid them into rings and wear them as jewelry in the old days. Nobody collected autographs. Martha Washington sent this one to Richard Blanchard Lee after her husband died. So people collected hair, but it was also normal for elite men to wear wigs. But George Washington forged his own path. He refused to don the fake locks. He wanted to be like the common man that he was serving. When Lee died, his wife passed the hair on, adding a note to it this time. She wrote, quote, Have set it in such a pin as you would like to wear, plain, unassuming, as the taste and character of the great George Washington. So whether it's showing courage, humility, or reaching across societal lines to help a new friend, don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Character matters way more than reputation because character is what God and the angels know of us.